Hello everyone and welcome to another playthrough of the Devil May Cry Bloody Palace miniature game. We've already done one playthrough where we played a solo game as Nero. This time we're going to be playing as Dante. However, I have incorporated all the expansions so that does also mean there'll be some boss variation. I don't know which boss we're going to get, I just know for sure it's not the same one because I took him out of the options. But it does also mean that Dante will be able to use his Sin Devil Trigger form as well as part of the gameplay and it does also mean there's going to be a wider variety of potential encounters to choose from. You still, because you're doing solo mode, have to start with a one player beginning level, then you do one level one, one level two and then you get a boss. We're not ever going to see a level three or a four if it's a solo game, that's just how it works to keep things balanced. Also I'm going to try something a little bit different this time as well because you don't really need to see the board because all the damage counters and whatnot are on, on here. So you don't need to see the player board is what I mean. So what I'm going to try and do is have a static shot for the actual gameplay board. And the combos I do, I'll just put on the board for you to see. And see if that makes things more watchable. I'm aware you know, there's a lot of shaky cam when you're moving backwards and forwards. This game doesn't require you to see as much besides the board as something like Blackstone Fortress. We will quickly go over the new gameplay mechanics though and just the basics of how Dante plays because each character plays differently. He of course has his four styles. You start with Royal Guard style. You can read there what it does. You can discard When you discard cards to dodge you add one to the total. You can purchase his other styles between levels. He has three basic attacks because he doesn't have the devil arms that Nero has. He has his Balrog Strike. He has Rebellion Swing. And he can fire Ebony and Ivory in a volley attack for one damage which also gives him one free movement. He has five base movement which is slower than Nero but he has eight HP so he's a bit tougher. This is his deck of cards that I've already shuffled. The goal is still to get as high a combo as possible but uh, just out of sight there that's his devil trigger deck which we use instead when he transforms. He's got a card up there that we use as well and just out of sight to the side of his board there's this. So this is how you track when his Devil Trigger is ready to use. It's there, it builds up, once it's up there you activate it and his goes down two slots per turn so at most you'll get three turns of Devil Trigger unless you buy an extension to it. And we actually have this card right here, Flame we'll Focus. So you go up a level or two levels or three levels depending on how awesome a combo you do. If you get hit it goes down a level and if you die it goes down to the bomb and then once it's activated you flip it and then that's the rules for using the devil trigger that I've basically just explained to you. Uh, there's some new cards to purchase that can extend your devil trigger gauge and some other stuff related to the expansion as well but we'll worry about that when it happens. Dante does obviously become larger, he's a 3 hex mini. When he's larger he does a lot more damage but hopefully having the harder encounters from the expansions will balance out him having a devil trigger whereas Nero didn't. But yeah with that covered uh, I, we'll just go straight to our, well we'll put the, the rest of these away for now because we don't want to see what our other encounters are. But we might as well see what we're starting with. This is an expansion one. It's from the Walking Arsenal expansion. One Hell Sian Kaina? I'm not sure how to pronounce it. And One Hell Bat. Oh no. So this is the angle I'm going to try and work with. You can sort of see where the combos will link off of. I can tell you what number we're on on the board until you can see it roughly there. Obviously we're one trying to beat Nero's score which I won't spoil for you. Set up the enemies. This is the, the Hell Kaina. I guess I'm going to go with the pronunciation. And then the Hellbat over there as well. And we can take a look at their stat cards real, real quick. So the Hellbat drops two green orbs, five red orbs, has 20 HP and uh, they can't be stunned unless they have three stun markers and when they die they explode and everything within four hexes, hunters or enemies, suffer three damage so that's pretty bad. Helkiana, one health orb, three red orbs, nine HP I'm getting a shadow cast, let's see, there we are at the end of a hunter's turn if possible they must choose a Helkiana that did not activate during their turn and is not stunned and activated as if they had the first player token then it stuns. So it doesn't get a turn, it gets a turn after a hunter assuming that it isn't stunned. Also for the encounter 
Had to draw two achievement cards, I have not looked at them yet. Saviour, claim this if you slay an enemy that's in- oh, that's, we're not scoring that one. Claim this if you slay an enemy during an- Okay, I'm going to draw two more because those cannot be gained if you're playing solo mode. I really should take out the ones that are impossible. Alright, we've got crowd control. Claim this if you hit at least four different enemies. That will stay in play, but obviously I can't get it when there's two. Claim this if you hit at least three different enemies with guns. Or ranged, rather. Alright, well those will stay in play. Again, I'm not sure if achievements are supposed to stay in play, but that's the way we're doing it. And all that remains then is for Dante to start, which means we're drawing one, two, three, four, five. And we'll take a look at our initial hand. Interrupt, Rebellion Cut, Rising Dragon, Coyote Shot, and Balrog Kick. So he does have his other weapons as part of his setup. And uh, let's see, discard this during the card, play into a combo chain, but before resolve it. That's just going to be used for defense because that's for using with other hunters. Alright, give me a second to think what I'm going to do. Alright, we've got a great chance here to do a red combo because we have a combo finisher. Rising Dragon is a red combo finisher. But we're going to start simple and we're going to play Ebony, Ebony, <laughs> Ebony, Ebony, Ebony and Ivory volley so it keeps the yellow chain. It does one damage and Dante gets to move one square towards his foe. Then we're going to do his actual move to move him here so he's adjacent. And then at that point we're going to throw in the Coyote Shot for two damage. It hits anyone within four, it deals one damage. Oh, that's something I did wrong with Nero. Other than Lady gun attacks, even though you do have 360 vision, they target the closest enemy just like in the game. So I made a bit of a mistake there. Then we're going to play Balrog Strike for two damage and then to change it to a red chain. We might actually be able to get the kill here because that's three, four, five damage already. We're going to do a Balrog Kick for seven damage. It also knockbacks, stuns, and allows us to follow up. I'm going to put the damage on afterwards if we don't kill it instantly, but I'll put the stun on to make sure we know it doesn't get a turn. And then we're going to finish it off with a, a Rising Dragon. You must claim your combo, and then when you do, you get double the style points. So that in total is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's dead, so it's, it's gone. It doesn't matter that it got stunned. And that is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 card combo, so that's 2, but it goes up to 4 points. 1, 2, 3, 4 points. I know you can't see, but we're on 4, obviously. And more importantly, it was a 5 combo. It's a shame if we could have made it a 6 combo, we would have got 2 on the Devil Trigger gauge. We get 1. That's okay, we don't need it right now. So that we're banking that, we have 2 cards left for defense, or additional movement. And because the piano is dead, it's doing nothing, so we'll go straight to the AI turn once I put back my Ebony and Ivory shot and Balrog Strike because they are basic attacks, the rest get discarded. Let's draw the card for Hellbat and see what it does. Conflagration. Oh, I'll put down the, uh, the orbs for the kill in a second. Move the Hellbat away from the nearest hunter, then make this attack. One, two, three. As far back as possible. This target uh, attack targets the nearest three hunters that are in front of the Hellbat. Well, that's three damage coming in. We shall use both these to dodge two, but then Royal Guard style makes it three. So I've added Green Orb, Red Orb, picked up two on Dante and drawn a new hand. Now that I know the bats are programmed AI-wise to run away from you, we need to get in there. So what have we got here? Rebellion cut right, we've got a Taunt, Balrog Blow, Balrog Kick. Strategize. Discard this card during your turn to go through your deck and add something. Okay, we've got another good red combo. Uh, we're not going to be able to get close enough. Dante's got movement 5, so we'll move there and pick up the orbs. I know we don't need the green orb, but... Uh oh, where was that? There. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, let's turn him so he's front facing. It's a bit awkward to tell where the front facing is sometimes because they're not always pointing towards the front facing. So that's unfortunately as far as he can move. Um, we might just have to save this hand for defense. I don't, I, I guess, okay fine. We'll shoot Ebony and Ivory at him 
for one damage and then we get one free movement. But that's it. <laughs> Might as well just save the rest for having an uber defense turn. So yeah, we'll just we'll bank these cards for defense. Combo of one gives nothing. And then we'll draw his next AI card. Move the Hellbat six hexes towards the nearest hunter, ending its move as close as possible with as many facing its front arc as possible, then do this attack. Well, one, two, three, four, five. It's here. Dente's poking it in the face with his gun. Let's uh, turn him that way and turn. That's awkward. We're going to have to turn him slightly to the side there. So that's four damage coming into Dente. He can easily block that. One, two, three. Well, you only need three because of Royal Guard style. Boom. Well, actually, it, it matters based on what we want. We don't want that card. I want this. I want this. We'll get rid of Taunt. We'll get rid of that. That blocks the damage. And we'll only draw three new cards. So, High Tide. Oh, High Time, sorry. Helmbreaker. Ooh. Yellow into green chain. And Ebony and Ivory, but not a... Okay, well, I, I was wanting to do a red combo, but... The Hellbat has 20 HP. We're not going to kill it this turn, I don't think. Hmm. What special stuff did the green do? Sorry, let me just look at these. We can claim a combo and it pushes back when we finish. I'm not sure if that's a good idea. We need to get three stun on him. I'm not going to get three stun either. All right, well, let's just work up a combo, get some points going. So we'll do Ebony and Ivory Volley. Ebony and Ivory... Ivory <laughs> Volley 2 for 2 damage. I could technically move for free twice. Don't need to. And then we want it to be 2, 3, 4, 5. Either way we're doing 5 damage. One way uses one extra card though. So I guess we'll go for the larger combo. We'll do Balrog Strike. Balrog Blow. Yes, Balrog Blow. Balrog Kick. Bang, bang, bang. It does involve a pushback and a follow-up and one stun, but we know that's not enough to stun the bat. So in total, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 damage. 5, 7 damage to the bat. 7 damage and 5 cards again. So that is only 2 this time. So that puts us at 6 points. And we move up another square on the Devil Trigger Gauge, which I know you can't see. We're still 3 away from being able to activate it. So... We have two cards for defense. These go away. The basic cards go back in to our options. The rest get discarded. And we draw an AI card for the Hellbat. Soar on high. Move the Hellbat six hexes away from the nearest hunter if possible. It must not end its move within three hexes. Shuffle the deck. But oh, it runs away. One, two, three. It's. It's got to be, what, at least three hexes away? One, two, three, four. Okay, it's fine. I need to go shuffle their AI deck and draw three more cards. All right, we're looking to do damage. We've got a Stinger, classic. He can move three hexes when doing it. Oh, and it links into anything, excellent. Ebony and Ivory shot. Rebellion sweep. I think we're, we're gonna enjoy the green combo this turn. So, we'll shoot Ebony and Ivory at him once. We get a free move. We shoot Ebony and Ivory again. We get a free move. We're now one square away. Then... Ooh, then what do we do? It has to stay yellow, huh? Oh, that's interesting. Yellow doesn't come out of this. No, we can't sting her. Ah! No, sorry, we can. It's just we can't do a Balrog or Rebellion first. Because then it can link into... Oh, no, we can't. No, because High Time goes from yellow. That's awkward. That's awkward. Okay, well. We're just going to have to use his move then. We'll use his move to just move in because we haven't done his one per turn move. We shall do high time. Which does add one stun, but it doesn't matter because he's a bat. And then we'll end with Helmbreaker for three damage. And it shoves him away, but there's no space to shove him away. It's only a four hit combo, unfortunately. Which gets us one style point, which is puts us at seven. Yeah, seven. And is not enough, I think. Oh, wait, no, no, it is enough to gain one level. As long as it's more than three, you gain a level on the Devil Trigger Gauge, so that's fine. 
and it does 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 damage. On top of the 7 damage he had, he's at 14 out of 20. Let's just put him at 14 instead. There's 10, there's 14. Get rid of them. 14. We have two cards for defense, and he. Move it three hexes away again. One, two, three, I guess. And he's going to shoot his ranged attack at Dante. It's not turning. I knocked him. Three damage. We shall spend our two cards in hand, plus Trickster Style, to dodge and do no damage to us. Trickster Style is. Oh, sorry, I keep on calling it Trickster. It's Royal Guard. Alright, drawing a new hand, we want to do 6 damage, yeah, 6 damage this turn. Million stab, rebellion cut left, okay, we want to do a blue combo. Oh, absolutely, we're doing a blue combo. Yeah, we'll, we'll be doing a blue combo, I, I feel. And coyote shot, sure, so we'll, this will be a good one. There's 1 damage from ebony and ivory, and then we'll also move up 1. We shall do a QT shot for two. And uh, actually, you know what? I don't think we have a. Do we have a movement thing? Let's say I moved in first, because I totally forgot there isn't a move in. So then we did those two. Then, Rebellion Swing for one. So that's three, four damage. Five, six, seven. Is that already enough? That's already enough. Can I do less? Can I take that back? I want to do more cards. Because um, he had what? He had six left. Three, four. Oh, I'm going to kill him regardless. Alright, well, do this. Put in million stab for five, six, seven. It's a, it's a proper finisher, so it doubles our score. It's four cards, so we still go up double trigger by one. And four cards is usually just a single point. It doubles, we get two. So, you know, that puts us at nine. It's not too bad. The bat is dead. He drops five. So one is just going to be left behind by the combat. Four. I'm going to go to Dante to spend. And the two here, health orbs, are just going to land elsewhere as well because we don't need those. So, that's the starter fight done. And we have two, four, six, seven orbs to spend on new cards. So I shall go do some shopping and then come back with the results. Shopping complete. Two were spent on Devil Heart, which extends the Devil Trigger gauge by two. You can still use it as soon as you get to the normal track, but it gives you two extra, and in Dante's case that means a couple of extra turns of Devil Trigger form, and that costs two. So I'll be placing that above the board. There's actually a slot on the board for it, which is pretty neat. If you ask me, I spent one on a rebellion strike just to add up more blue chains because it's very obvious there's a lot of blue chain in his base deck. Uh, I spent one on rebellion sweep, which is similar, and that costs one. And then also spent three on stinger level two, which is a yellow into mixed combo that does four damage to a frontal target, and you can move four hexes before doing it. That seemed like a really good get. So that's all the orbs spent. Um, we need to draw the next encounter. Let me lean over here real quick. See what it is. It's a walking arsenal one. It's another expansion one. Two Pyrobat, that's the smaller ones. Two Helkiana that we just saw. Or Kaina, kind of, I, I don't know. And three M, uh, the red Impusas. We also need two new achievement cards. Let's draw those now because I need to look out the enemies. Defensive fighter, clean this if you dodge at least four damage from an enemy attack. That would have been hand in that last one. And claim this if you hit at least three different enemies with ranged attacks during your turn, which I did wrong as Nero, because you can't pick your target. It has to be the closest one unless you're playing as Lady. Uh, but we'll see. We'll get this set up. So as you can see, the enemies have appeared. I don't think you reset Dante's position or like your player positions between floors. Also, yes, the Hellbat should have exploded and hurt him for three damage, but it also drops heals would have just dropped one of the heals on Dante as well, so he, he's staying at the same health. Here's the red and Pusa card, just in case you didn't see last time or need reminding. They drop three red orbs, they have seven HP, and then the Pyrobats, which are the small versions of the thing we just saw, as they hit the camera, they drop one green, three red, eight health, they can move through occupied hexes as they move, 
When they're slain, each model within three hexes suffer two damage, so they also explode and are generally a little annoying. And there's obviously a whole bunch of enemies on the board as we draw our initial one, two, three, four, five cards and see what we get. But we're very close to getting our Devil Trigger and attempting that. So we've got High Tide, Rebellion, Cut Left, Helmbreaker, Balrog Kick, and a basic shot. Okay. Well, let's start as we mean to go on then. We'll fire at the closest enemy for one, which gives us a free move towards it. We'll do our free shot for two damage, which includes a free move towards it. Uh, do I want it like this? I want it like this, I think. So that's two damage. And we're looking for a green combo, I guess. We'll do two damage which involves a stun, but hopefully that won't matter if we get the kill. And then we'll crash down on him for three. So that's the combo where you like swipe up and then come slamming down. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven damage. That's exactly enough to kill him. It would push him back, but it doesn't matter because he's dead. So we'll bank that. And that means we have two cards left over for defense. And we haven't done our move yet. So we're going to go and hide in the corner up here and let them come to us. Actually, I should spread out the red orbs first. They drop three, so he's gonna grab two and drop one, which he's gonna pick up as he leaves. And go one, two, three, four, five. Hide in the corner, pick that up as well. Two for defense and the hell kinda they have to activate first, I believe, just because of the rule they have. If a hunter activates and they aren't stunned, they get a turn. It isn't such a bad thing when you're solo, I guess. But it would be if you were playing with other people, so... Also, it doesn't say you draw one card for all of them, whereas it does say that for the Red Impusa, so I guess this is... I should have clarified who I was going with first. We'll say it's that one, because that's who I was thinking of when I drew. Move it two X's towards the hunter and do this attack. It's not going to hit anything, but it goes one, two towards Dante, and then the other one, reap it, oh my goodness, look at that attack, move it four hexes towards the nearest hunter, ending its move so it can hit as many people as possible, shuffle with the deck after returning this card to the bottom, four towards the nearest hunter, one, two, three, four, does not get him close enough to initiate because it spreads two hexes in front of him, so not far enough, fine, then we'll take a turn, with the Red Impusas. Three towards the nearest hunter. One, two, three. Can't reach. One, two, three. Can't reach. Oh, I totally forgot to um, bank the points for that combo. That was a four card combo with a finisher, so that would be two points. So we're actually at 11, and if we wanted to, we could trigger our Devil Trigger form, but I want to wait till the enemies are more gathered together. So that just leaves the Pyro Bats. Start with the closest one because I guess they also get one each. Move two X's away and fire. One, two. Oh, they're very annoying. So we'll drop one card plus uh, the Royal Guard style. That's that. Dodged. And then the other one. Move it four X's towards the nearest hunter. And then do that attack. One, two, three, four. This spreads. One, two, three. Can't reach. So but that's, a, that's a nasty attack. Pyro stream. Okay, let's see what happens. So we're on to the next turn, but I want to use the Devil Trigger. I want to see what happens, but we're not going to wait for the extended part. So we flip this over, and we do what it says. Draw cards from your Devil Trigger deck, not your normal Hunter one. Use your basic Devil Trigger attacks, not your basic form ones. And move the marker down two spaces at the end of your turn. So, here is Dante's card. His movement goes up to eight, that's his threat range. And that's just as normal rules as per. So all it's done is increase his move. His two basic attacks in this form are as follows. The Sin Devil Trigger Swipe and the Omega, which is, it just scores you a style point for shooting it, which is pretty neat. So these become the only two available basic attack cards he has. I'll just get rid of the other ones for now. I don't know if he keeps the bonus from Royal Guard style. I'm going to presume not. And then instead of drawing from the normal deck, we draw from this deck. So one, two, three, four, five. Let's see what we can do with this. Oh, of course, we also have to do a little bit of changing of miniature here. Pardon me. Whoop. 
and boom he just became a large demon you'll see him better in a second so we got the sluice the sluice the ombra advent and oh my goodness and judgment what is this discard this card during your turn to remove from the game board set him up anywhere in the game board oh wow it just teleports him well that's interesting okay let's discard this to teleport then first of all and we'll just go make that noise from Dragon Ball Z when things teleport see I want to get right in there it's a little awkward because of the miniatures but I'm in there I'm starting to see a problem with all the wings and then ooh, we could be so nasty okay well we'll start with sin devil trigger swipe which does make it a red combo but that doesn't matter so that's two damage and it would not hit him because of the way I've placed but it would hit those two for two damage each so let's see there's your two damage Oop. this is going to be hard to keep track of that's the only bad part hopefully it's not going to matter if they're dead so two damage to each of them from the devil swipe then We'll use the Ombra, and because they're equidistant, I will choose to shoot who's got less health. The Bat. I'm going to shoot the Bat for three, and that just gives us a style point for doing it. So we're up to 12? 12. Then, we're going to do another Ombra, and we're going to do it on him. Again, they're equidistant, so presumably I get to choose. For three, that gives us another style point. Just one, just for doing it. Uh, I apologize for the drone noise you can hear. The roadworks are still going on. Let me see here. The, the loose, not the sluice, sorry. This attack targets all enemies that are in front of Sin Devil Trigger Dante and within five hexes score one style point. All of them that are in front of him? That would hit both of them. Okie dokie. <laughs> we'll do that. So that's two more damage to each of them. So that would be five, six, seven. He's one away from death. Uh, let's see. Take away the three out of five to him because he took two more damage. And that's one more style point. Okay, I'm starting to see that maybe the devil trigger lets you score style points a bit too easily, but he's going to get a beating from the other enemies after this. He still has a move though because he teleported, he didn't do a move. Um, then he's going to do judgment. No, wait, but that ends your combo though. No, he'll do another sluice. But the targets, oh, they have to be in front of him, though. Mm, I don't, that's unnecessary. We'll save that for dodging. We'll go straight to Judgment. You must claim your combo after playing this, then score three style points. So that's five damage to all of them. So he's dead, he's dead. Five to this Pyro Bat. Five there, but let's worry. And then we get three points automatically. One, two, three. And then the combo itself gives us one, two, three, four, five, which is two more points. Because that doesn't double, it just gives you the so puts us at 19. And our devil trigger gauge goes down by one. No, sorry, by two. So we get three turns of devil trigger. Um It's pretty powerful. So I'll get this cleaned up. There's gonna be some orbs left sitting, but he's gonna automatically suck up quite a few of them because he's three hexes wide. That's that's something. Oh, there is some additional end of turn stuff, stuff first of all, because Dante shot three different targets with his guns, so he scores both sharpshooter objectives, sorry, achievements in play. They don't score until the end of the game, however, but they have been scored and will be added. And the other thing was, totally forgot he hasn't done his move yet. And as you can see, I've left the green orbs and one red orb sitting to try and pick them up if he needs them. So he's got movement eight, so he can go one, two, turn for three because he's larger now four five six turn for seven there that's where he'll be he wants them to come at him but and he's still got one potentially two for all i don't think royal guard style would count in sin devil trigger form so he's only got defense one but we are on to ai turns and the hell sienna needs to go first uh so let's see what he gets harvest again Two, one, two. He's not going to get close enough this turn. Then the 
red impusas. Each of them move, each red impusa that is adjacent to Hunter, nope, move every other one two towards them. One, two. You don't really want to be near him, buddy. You, you probably don't want that. And then the Pyrobat. Move the Pyrobat five hexes away if possible. Oh, I forgot he took damage from one of the Pyrobats exploding again. Let's say that green orb is not there. I keep forgetting that they explode in damage. So uh, a green orb heals three, so that counters the damage because it did two damage. Uh, if it's not possible, move within three hexes. No, it is absolutely possible. Move five away and then shovel this to the bottom of the deck. One, two, three, four, five. Later. All right, new turn for Dante. Let's draw five more cards. One, two, three, four, five. I love the way these cards look. There's not as many in the deck, so we might have to shuffle them. Discard, discard. When Dante suffers damage, to ignore all damage and move four hexes. Oh, we drew two of those, okay. Execution, the Ombra, and another Judgment. Wellity, wellity, wellity. What we're going to do is move first, so he's got eight move. He's going to go one, two, three, four is a turn, five is a turn, six, seven, eight is the turn uh, that I did after. Well, I did it on the way in just to try and make it easier. Because I want all those enemies around him. Like that. So. Uh, if we do Judgment to end the combo, though, we can't do Execution, which would be fun. Oh, but you can discard that for four. Four defense, that is. Okay, well, we'll start with a Sin Devil Trigger Swipe. So that's two damage to each of them, again. Have your two damage. And then have your... Two damage, good sirs. Two damage each. Then we will use the Ombra to bring him up to five damage, and that scores us one automatic style point, puts us on 20. Then, because they're adjacent, he will Ombra him for three. Put him at 5 damage. I don't have another 5 damage counter here. Oh, because the bat's got it, that's why. Oh, fine, there. So that's another style point. 21. And then, that's when you crack out the judgment again, I think. At 4 cards? Yeah, I think, I think so. That saves us a lot for defense. So we end the combo with judgment, so that's 5 more damage all around him. So he's dead. Five, he's dead, and five damage to him, but he lives. So that's three additional style points for ending with judgment. One, two, three, so that's 24. And then a four combo itself gives us one, so we're smack dab on 25. Those two enemies are dead, I'll drop their orbs in a second, and then we can draw their AI cards. Oh, he shouldn't be there anymore, but the orbs are placed. Uh, I'll move the devil trigger gauge down too, so Dante's got one turn of transformation left. There's no hell kinas left, so it's straight on to red and Pusas. He is immediately attacking Dante for three damage. Dante will discard Execution to counter the damage, it counters four, so damage negated. And then the Pyrobat, who's far away, move it two X's away and then make the ranged attack. One, two, he's right in the corner there. He shoots at his back for two damage. He'll discard both shifts to counter the two damage as well and neither attack was four damage so he can't claim defensive fighter all right we're looking to end this this turn one two three four five this is his last turn of devil trigger regardless what we got slice right and vent discard this card to place him anywhere perfect slice right slice or just cut and slice left two slices right and slice left Interesting, interesting. Um, we don't want to get close to the bat because it explodes and when it dies. So we're going to use our movement to go one and pick up those, two, three, four, five, six. So those have been picked up, don't need the green orb, but that's fine. Five, this, this is not going to be a good turn for. for uh, combo because I can't not do enough 
Like, I'm going to do too much damage, is what I'm saying. But I guess we'll just... We'll do a swipe. A standard swipe. Two damage. It's dead. So he's gone. And he drops... Well, he's going to drop one orb and collect two. Boom. Done. We don't want to be near the bat, so Dente's just going to shoot it. It's the last enemy on the board. Boom. You do get one style point for using Ombra to put us at 26, but it's just a two-piece combo, so no points scored. Dante reverts back to his normal form, which will make go there. I'll go back to his other decks, and uh, the, the fight is over, so we're not picking up the orbs. The bat drops. We don't get hurt by his explosion either. He is ridiculously powerful in his Sin Devil Trigger form, which I suppose isn't a surprise. Um, well, I'll have to swap the decks back and whatnot, but let's at least see what we're setting up for the next fight, our level 2 fight before the boss, whomever the boss is. It's from the Alpha Omega expansion, I think. Two Scudo Angelo and six Impusa. Okay, I'll get that set up. So how silly of me, I forgot of course we have the shopping step. So I've done that, I had a bunch of orbs to spend, we also have achievements drawn for the new encounter. I haven't set up the encounter yet, but got their enemy cards as well. So I went full gun build, just to give it a go. I haven't bought the gunslinger style yet, but that's definitely what will be prioritized once this combat is done. So two charged volleys for two orbs each. You get a move, they do three damage. Two accumulates for one each. You could discard the card to move your devil trigger gauge up by two. Two charged blasts for three each. They do four damage, the target has to be within four and it also deals two damage to adjacent people. And then two for a straight, you discard it to dodge two damage and deal two damage back to whoever just attacked you. The Impusa card, we've seen before, they're weak, two red orbs, five health, there's a bunch of them though. So gonna be high opportunities for combos and then we haven't seen Scudo Angelos. They are one green, five red, they have 14 HP when a Scudo Angelo has a guard token on it, it reduces the amount of damage it suffers from each attack from hunters in front of it by 1 to a minimum of 1. Remove any guard tokens at the start of the enemy phase. Okay, so that's the purchases. Here's the achievements drawn for the combat. We need to add 3 of them. Oh, and challenging one should have been added in. I didn't do that. Oh well. I'll put them in now for when we get to the boss. Claim if there's at least a 6 combo chain. That's, that's pretty easy, especially now with all these neutral gun ones I've just purchased. Reaper, kill two enemies during your turn, fairly doable. And then, stylish, six cards. Okay, so that's all the achievements in play. I'll get the enemy set up. So as you can see, Dante is beset on all sides. He has three Impusa behind him. I've drawn my initial hand, there it is, because I wanted to think about what I would do, and I've already decided. So, let's start. We have two impulses who are equidistant, so I think that means I get to choose whom I attack. We're going to deal one. We're going to deal another one from two ebony and ivory attacks to this one. And each one initiates a free move as well, so one, two. So we're going to move there. He's got two damage on him. And at that point, we're going to initiate a red combo. So that takes us to four damage. And then we're going to play a Balrog Kick to kill him, because these Impusa only have 5. That would knock him back, stun him, and it would allow me to follow up. I'm going to choose not to, because it's just going to kill him, because that's 2, 3, 4, uh, sorry, 4, 5, 6 damage. It's 1 too many. He is dead. He is splatted. He drops just 2 orbs, so 1 on Dante, 1 on the person he was attacking. Uh, that's a 4 combo, which means we do get to move our Devil Gauge up by 1. And we score a poultry one point. Because I almost see it on the scoreboard. Almost. That's us at 27. And we haven't initiated a move yet. So let me get these cards out of the way. This is when it becomes awkward if I'm putting the combos on the board. Those get discarded. We have our move of five. And we're going to go one, two, three. And cower in the corner there with three cards for defense. We only need to draw one AI card for all the Impusa, so let's do them first, just because it's really quick, relatively speaking. Everyone that's adjacent attacks him, everyone that isn't moves two towards him. One, two. One, two. 
one, two, one, two, one, two. Here they come. All right, now the Scudo Angelos. Let's see what they do. Place a guard token next to. Oh, I didn't say which one I was doing. Oh, we'll say this one. Place a guard token next to him and then move him four hexes. One, two, three, four. I'm not actually sure which token you get with the game is the guard token. I will just put the stun next to him. I know it's not a stun. It means he is guarding from the front, so we need to get behind him. And then the other Scudo Angelo. Move four hexes towards the nearest hunter, then make this attack. Well, he's not going to be able to reach, but one, two, three, four. They're gathering, and that's our turn. So for Dante's next turn, I am discarding Interrupt, keeping two cards in my hand, so we only draw three. That's a Charged Blast, that's an Accumulate, and that's a Straight. So we're going to discard the Accumulate immediately to gain two Devil Trigger spaces. One, two, that puts us two away from the base level, being able to activate it. Hmm, must be within four hexes. Deal two damage to each adjacent enemy. And fortunately, there's no enemies who are adjacent to each other. We're not getting good combo draws this time. Well, how much health does a pro uh, Scudo Angelo have? 14. Oof. Okay, okay. And Dante only moves five, which isn't great. Let's go this way. Go one, two, three. So that's his move. That's his one move allowed in a turn. Done. And then we'll start with the charge blast. Obviously hits the impulse right in front of us. We'll follow that up with ebony and ivory, which kills it. So it's, it's dead. We'll, we'll grab one and put one on the the board there, like that. We get a free move from the Ebony and Ivory, so we'll just move over here and pick that up. And then, do we have a... Ooh, we're going to have to discard a card to shift, I think. Hmm. What should we do? What should we do? We'll discard High Time to shift one. And pick up this red orb, we might as well, because we're probably going to take some hits here. And then that means we can do Rebellion Swing. It's part of the, I, th I think the combo is allowed to keep going if you shift. So one damage to this, and then we'll do Rebellion Cut to do two to it, which pushes him, pushes him back, but we are not following him. We're going to stay where we are, and that is a combo of four, so one more on the Devil Trigger Gauge, and one Poultry Point, unfortunately. Didn't kill two things that turn, only killed one, didn't have a six combo, didn't score any achievements. Um, yeah, so we hold on to the straight, everything else gets discarded. Basic attacks go back to our basic attack area. Discarded, discarded, and they accumulate, discarded. So, we only have one card for defense, but it is a card that lets us deal damage and negate a hit. Um, then puts us first. Each adjacent one does two damage, otherwise they move two towards the nearest hunter. Here's, here's right in your face for you, one, two, one, two, one, two. So that's not so bad, here's the dangerous card though. Um, the one that's guarding. Oh, his guard disappeared at the start of his face. Broad swing, move him three hexes towards the nearest hunter, then make this attack. One, two, three, he's in there and he does make the attack. So we're going to discard this to dodge two of the four. It becomes three because of Royal Guards. We do still take one damage. That's fine. But he also suffers two damage from us countering with the play of this card. So that is... We almost broke even, yeah. Two damage out of 14. What could possibly go wrong? This, when the other one activates. Move three hexes towards the nearest hunter, then make this attack. Oh, and then they also get a guard afterwards, right? Because it's... No. This is unique to this card. They get a guard right after. Well, he's in there. And he dealt four damage to Dante. So that brings him to five out of eight health. Which is not so good. Also, he took damage. So it's gone down by two. Because he took damage there and he took damage there. So his Devil Trigger Gauge dropped by two. That's nasty. No wonder it's so powerful if he can get it off. Okay. Alright, I've already drawn my next hand. This is it, because I wanted to plan what I'm doing, and I think I have a plan of sorts. We're going to start 
start with a Balrog Strike. Wait, is that the one I wanted to start with? Uh, is that the one? I think it is. Or I could start with Ebony and Ivory. Hmm. I'm rethinking. I had it, I had it all planned out and now I'm rethinking my strategy. Because we, we could kill him. Easily. By just doing the charge shot and then the Balrog blow. No, but we start on yellow chain though, so we need to make it red. So, okay, yeah. Okay, that's fine. We can do this. So we do charge shot. Sorry, charge volley into this Impusa for three damage. Then we do Balrog strike. Which is five damage. So he's now dead. And we're going to move on that square in a second. So I'm just going to put the two red orbs into the bank. Just so that we scored both. Then we're going to do... Ebony and Ivory, which we're allowed to move one before initiating. So we're going to move there. And we're going to shoot him for one damage, just because he's damaged and he's one of the two closest targets. Right there. And then... Oh, then we're going to discard this to shift one. And go, hello, Impusa chum. I want to get away from those knights, they're scary and do lots of damage. And that allows us to do Balrog Blow, and then after you make this attack, you can move up to two hexes, and then you make it again. So we'll just, this is the combo continuing. So one attack, push over here, two attack, that's two damage, to this one, and then ending the combo with Rising Dragon for three, which kills this one. We'll take one orb, drop the other. And we have to claim the combo. It gives us this to block and it blocks with three, so that's pretty good. Um, that gives us a five combo. So for the purposes of Devil Trigger, that's still one. For the purposes of scoring, it would normally be two, but because we did Rising Dragon, that doubles to four. One, two, three, four. We're getting to the awkward point now where the scoreboard is visible and it's in the way of the combos. Uh, let me clear this up without hitting the score, and then we'll draw the AI cards. Oh wait, no, sorry, Dante hasn't done a normal move yet. He, he is also going to run away. One, two, three, four, five. He's running all the way down here with his Helm Breaker for defense. All right, let's start with the Impusas. Move three towards the nearest hunter, then make that attack. One, two, three. This, he's the only one that's gonna get in, so we'll counter with Helm Breaker, so he gets the damage. One, two, three. He's in, but doesn't reach. So that's that done. First, the Angelo with damage. We'll always start with him, just for the, in case I forget to say. Three hexes, and then guard. One, two, three. So he is there. Stun would actually be very good against them, because they, they don't have stun resist. And then the other one. Five hexes, and make a five attack, and then shuffle the deck. One, two, three, four, five. They are, they are persistent. He can't reach, so this just gets discarded, but their AI deck gets shuffled. And the Helmbreaker is discarded. I want to plan what I'm doing again, but let's draw my hand on camera. That's five. Rebellion Swing, Strategize, Balrog Blow, Million Stab, and a Coyote Shot. Okay, I'll think about this. All right, let's take out the trash. I've I've planned my turn. We're going to start with the Rebellion Swing on the Apusa in front of us. I'm going to put my combo up here just so it doesn't accidentally knock the score. So that's one damage to him. That's that's fine. Then we're going to do. Uh, then we're going to do. Ebony and Ivory. For one damage, and we're allowed to shift for one. To here. Wait, we want to face this way though here. So that's two damage to this Impusa. Then we're going to do Rebellion Strike. That's three damage so that Impusa dies. So he's dead. Drop one. Gather one. It also does one damage to the adjacent. Like so. Uh, and let's see. We're then going to do a Coyote Shot just to increase the length of combo. For two damage to this Impusa, taking it to three in total. And 
and then million stab. He's on his side arc, so it's only doing two, but that is enough to kill him. Unfortunately, I can't get to six combo to score those stylish fighters. He is dead though, so that's all the small fry gone. We're gonna have more red orbs than we need know to do with because we're playing solo. Um, it goes up one on the Devil Trigger gauge. We haven't done our basic move yet, which we're gonna do. We have two cards for defense, strategize and Balrog Blow, both worth technically two if you take into account Royal Guard style. We did get a combo of five with a finisher, which doubles. So that is four points. One, two, three, four. We're into the E with 36. And Dante's gonna move one, two, three, four, five, and cower in the corner facing this way. And we might as well just jump. He's still got the five damage. Straight to the Proto Angelos. We'll start with the front one this time, actually, just because he's in front. Place a guard token on this Angelo, then move five hexes away from the nearest hunter if possible. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. He technically should have went like directly that way, but the cards are in the way. And then the other one. Three. One, two, three. And he can't reach. So nothing there. Oh, and he does get a guard token, though. So he's guarded and the other one isn't. Uh, we're going to dump Strategize, hold on to Balrog Blow, and draw four cards. And then I'm going to take another break to think about what I want to do. But we're drawing four. One, two, three, four. Let's see what we get. Rebellion Strike, Rebellion Cut, Taunt, and a Charge Blast. Okay. Okay, so I have a plan. I should stop saying that, but first, we're going to play Taunt as a shift card. It gives you three shift movement. So that's going to give us a one, a two, and a three to move Dante there. Then we're going to fire Ebony and Ivory. You know, put the combo kind of here so you can see it, but it's not obstructing the scoreboard. You get to move when you do that. So he's going to move, do one damage. He's guarded, so it does one to a minimum of one. Or reduces by one to a minimum of one, I should say. Then we're going to do Balrog Blow, which is just one times two, but you get to move two hexes in between the attacks. So one damage, one, two, to come around to his side arc so he's no longer guarded. And that's a total of three damage. The guard no longer matters because he's attacking his side. Then, Rebellion Swing for one. Then, Rebellion Strike for 3 plus an actual stun. So he's stunned, so he will not be getting a turn. Then a Rebellion Cut for 2, which includes a pushback. So his pushback here, I'll add on the damage in a second here. And then finally, to bring it to 6 cards, a Charge Blast for 4. So in total, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 14, 15, 16. With the damage he had accumulated, he is dead. Actually, would that mean I could do the charge blast? Because he had 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yes, because it needed 2 from the charge blast, so it counts. He's over there. I wonder if the pushback is... Oh, I can follow up, because I want to be adjacent to get a heal. <laughs> so he's dead anyway, and when they die, they drop 1 heal, so Dante's going to heal two da uh, 3 damage, rather, and leave himself on 2 damage. The stun no longer matters. And more importantly, he was killed with a 6 combo. So that means that for one, we move up two spaces on the Devil Trigger gauge, which I know you can't see, but we're into one of the two bonus ones from that card I bought. 6 combo card means that we move 3 points. 1, 2, 3. And it also means we score Stylish Fighter for having at least 6 cards and uh, the other Stylish Fighter. They are both claimed, and that is added to the pile for end of turn, or end of game rather, scoring. So all that matters now, that will use my entire hand so we have nothing to defend with what he's about to do. I'll start that in a second, let's just see what he does. Place a guard token on him, move four towards. One, two, three, four. Everybody do the dinosaur. Here's what the hand the turn is looking like. Going to hold on to that accumulate. If we get at least a five combo here, we're going to have a full extended devil trigger gauge for the boss, and I can't wait. So we've still got two damage on us. This is obviously full health. He's guarded, so we need to get around him, which is fine. We can do that. Um, 
What should we do that with though? I guess we're going to do our move and go one, two, three. We'll pick up that and attack his back. So we've done our once per turn move and we'll open with Ebony and Ivory for one damage. We shall then translate that into... Ooh, let's do Stinger 2 for four damage to his back so the guard isn't relevant because we're attacking his back. Then with Stinger, we can't link it into a white one, unfortunately, but we can link it into a green, a red, or a blue. So we'll do a Rebellion Cut for two more damage, and then we'll finish that off with a Coyote Shot. And then we'll hold on to those cards for defense. They accumulate in the Stinger, stinger for defense. So that's one, that's five, six, seven, eight, nine damage to this five, six, seven, eight. There we go, that is nine damage. Dante still has the two damage on him. That was just a four combo, it's just one point, so that puts us bang on 40. Uh, we also do max out the Devil Trigger Gauge. And let's see what he does in response. Move three hexes towards and attack. Spin on the spot. He ain't garden. So that's gone. He is doing four damage to Dante. We'll get rid of the accumulate because plus trick, uh, plus royal guard style. Sorry, that goes up to four, and he negates the damage. We'll hold on to the stinger. So we'll just draw four cards and see if that tells us what we're going to do. One, two, three, four. There's two cards left in the deck before I have to shuffle. Rebellion, Ebony and Ivory, High Tie, Balrog Kick. I don't know if that's enough to kill him. It's got nine damage. Oh, we could totally kill him, actually. We can just do this, I think. Because we have the Stinger as well. And the Stinger links a yellow to blue. Uh, move up to three hexes before making this attack. You don't need to move. He didn't guard, did he? Also, we have Ebony and Ivory back. These got discarded, though. I think we can kill him. So let's just do it. Ebony and Ivory, we can move. So there's one damage. Let's do Ebony and Ivory again. Two damage. Dancing around him. Two damage. Then we'll do Stinger for two. Link that into Rebellion Sweep for another two. And I think that's enough because he has nine on him. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yep, that is enough. He's dead to a four hit combo, so that is another one point and nothing else. And that does end the combat, so we'll be back in a second. Oh, also the green orb that he drops is amongst what's dropping on Dante, so he's healed to full. But we'll be back with the final shopping phase, and well, we see what, well, let's, let's drop what boss I'm getting after I've done the shopping. So shopping complete, there was actually some excess um, orbs I didn't want to spend because it's just going to clutter up the deck. Spent two on a draw, on two draws, sorry, so four in total. Discard this card when Dante suffers damage, take ignore all the damage and move two. So I figured that'd be good for a boss. Round trip for three, it's just a damaging blue combo that doesn't end the combo. So that's really good. Two on a straight, discard to dodge two damage and deal two damage to enemies in your front arc. An enemy, sorry, just one. So that's everything that was shopping or shopped for. Let's see what boss we're fighting. The boss is, I know for sure it's not the one we did last time, but I don't know which one it is. It is Cavalier Angelo. It's the one that turns into the bike when Dante kills it. You draw six achievement cards before dealing achievement cards. Remove all the cards marked with that. And then make sure that Demon Slayer is one of the ones picked. I'll do that and then we'll get started. He's going to start right behind Dante. So way too much glare. Drawing the achievement cards, taking away all the ones with skulls as instructed. Here's Cavalier Angelo's card. He has 40 HP. When you're doing this solo, when setting up him, place a guard token next to him. Cannot be stunned. When he has one or more guard tokens, it suffers three or less damage made by an attack. It goes to a minimum of one if attacked from the front, that is. Every time he gains three or more stun tokens, remove all stun tokens and one guard token from him. So he's all about guarding because then you break his parry like in the game. So these are the achievements we know that Devil Slayer or Demon Slayer has to be one of them because it tells you to make it on the top of the deck when you draw so we know that's one for 10 points when he dies a saviour another hunter that's we'll just discard it because it's impossible to get while solo uh, oh and that'll be a, another discard that's bad luck with the draw style master eight cards in your combo possible 
possible. Hard hitter, five or more damage in a single attack. I'll only be getting that if you hit him in the back. And kill stealer. Can't get that one either, that's unfortunate. So here is Cavalier Angelo. He's going to be right there with his front arc, I guess, facing there. That's as best as it can get to face Dante, where he was left at the end of the floor. Dante is immediately going to do his Devil Trigger to start his turn, so we're not going to draw from the normal deck. I'm going to get it set up for his Sin Devil Trigger form, and we're going to go nuts. We're going to go absolutely nuts. So, take the two basic cards, you know, one, two, three, four, five. I'll show you what we have, although I'm going to take a second to think about the attack that we're going to do. Cut, Advent, Advent, Shift, Execution. Could be better, but let's see what we can do. Alright, Sin Devil Trigger Dante is ready. He's playing Advent to teleport anywhere on, uh, anywhere on the board. If possible, there must be an enemy in his front arc. Zoom. Dragon Ball Z teleportation noise. To be right there behind Angelo. I'm just going to call him Angelo because I'm not 100% sure on the pronunciation. We're going to start with the Ombra. Which we can put there. We score a style point just for using it, and that's three damage. We'll add up the damage after we're done. We can actually do a pretty decent red combo here. So we'll start with a swipe for two, because you, even though it hits him in like five of his arcs, you have to take the one damage that's highest. Then we're going to do a cut, and that does three stun. So three stun destroys the guard. I presume he has AI cards that give him back guard, but that's six damage. And then we're going to do the finisher, execution, and you get extra style points equal to the number of cards in your combo. So that's six. So as far as combo points go, four, so it would be one just for the basic combo, but then four for having four cards. One, two, three, four. Our devil trigger gauge drops by two. So is that is at the top of the base bar now. It used up the extra slots. And more importantly, Angelo, five, eleven... He just took 17 damage. Let me get the numbers required for that. Alright, let's see what Angelo does in response to that. Hunters adjacent to Cavalier Angelo are knocked back 3 hexes. Move Cavalier Angelo 5 hexes towards the nearest hunter and then make this attack. So knocked back 3. 1, 2, 3. Kind of pushing the... Oh, did I score any of those? I did 5 more damage in a single attack. I hit him in the back for like 6. So yeah, hard hitter got scored. It was at least five. I forgot what it was, but it was at least five, so that did score. So that's done. So he knocked me back, but that doesn't do damage, and he, he has to do five hexes of turning, though. So one, two, two, and uh, one more. Three, four, five. I think five would put him there with the front hex facing. He is one away, so that misses. But for the record, if I did that wrong, he could counter by spending both of these for four plus, well, four to negate, so it would only take three damage. But he is one away. I know it's hard to see because of the angle. I might have to move the camera in a second here, but there is one hex of square between them. And um, I want to teleport behind. Oh, sorry, I could just use shift to negate all damage, and then he moves four. So whatever. He would have take, taken zero damage regardless. We're keeping advent. Actually, we're keeping both those, because they're both handy. We're going to draw just three cards, which I guess I'll just do now on camera, from the correct deck that is. Slice right, demo eight damage, and a cut. I've moved the camera a little, so hopefully you can see better now, but we're going to immediately play the other advent, since we didn't use it for defense, because we would have used the shift, if anything, to teleport again, so that we're at his rear. I totally forgot I didn't even do a basic move with him, so we definitely wouldn't have taken any damage last turn. And then we're going to utterly destroy him, <laughs> I feel. We're going to use the Omega to start, which I accidentally called Umbra last time. It just scores one point. Going to go into a swipe for two. Then, it also converts it to red. We're going to do a cut, which also scores just for using it, one style point. Then slice right, which will hit him in one of the front arcs, and also score one point, puts us on 50. And then use Demolition, to, because when you play this, you have to end your turn, and you score four style points. One, two, three, four. 
Then from the one, two, three, four, five combo, we get two more, one, two, and we drop two on the bar. And as we end our hand with a shift to defend ourselves, three, four, five, 11, 12, 13, 14, 22 damage. 22 damage there to Angelo. So I had to do some quick maths there just to make sure he wasn't dead. He is on 39 damage. He has 1 HP left. So make this good Angelo, it's your last turn because you're gonna die. So, teleport, remove him from the board and then set him up anywhere that's at least 3 hexes from the hunter facing the nearest one. If that's not possible, where it is. Remove 10 damage from him and place a guard token. Again, the damage removal mechanic is because it lets somebody snipe the kill if you're playing multiplayer. So I will do the teleport. I will give him guard back so we can't get to his rear so that might make him harder to kill if we just do that. I'll give him a guard token so he, 3 damage goes off any front arc attack down to a minimum of 1 but we just need to do 1. But I'm not healing him for 10. Plus, we do have one last turn of Sin Devil Trigger. Let's see if we could do the 10. Let's, let's just see if it's possible. I'm going to discard that so we're going to draw a full hand and see if we can do it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Slice left, slice left, slice right, <laughs> judgment, the ombra. You know what? We don't even need to do, do a break. He moves eight, so that's more than enough to go one, two, well, three, four, five, six, seven. That's, it's kind of, I'm not sure if that would count because he's kind of touching part of the front arc, but he's also not. So, so typical, I move the camera so it's slightly facing higher up and then it's the combat's come all the way down here, but... Hey, he's dead in one damage, so we're only going to count a one, so no combo. But let's just see what we could have done. There's three. Uh, let's see, do we want to go red? Yep. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and twenty-two. Twenty-two damage. He was dead either way. We have saved Trish, I think it was Trish, no wait, yeah it was, it was Trish who was stuck inside this boss from memory. Dante has defeated, but that does mean that we're on to the final score. Let me get this cleaned up, again that doesn't, that doesn't count as a score because we killed him in one hit, so it was a score, a combo of zero. We do however get Demon Slayer to add on to our final points, so let's see what Dante's final score is. So is Dante's Sin Devil Trigger form a little OP? Yes. Was it fun to use? Yes. Anyway, these are the achievements he managed to get during that adventure. He's currently at 56 points. If you want to watch the previous video for yourself and not know Nero's score, look away now. The score was 69 points, so that's what he needs to beat. So he's adding on 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That would be 20, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Dante beats Nero's score by exactly 10 points with a score of 79. Let me know in the comments who you would like to see played as next in a solo run through. Your choices are V, Trish or Lady. And all of them have Devil Trigger mechanics, but they all act, a little, they all act and play totally different. So let me know what you want to see. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And until next time, ta-ta for now.